Hey there humans, Bob here. Welcome to another Marvel Avengers guide video. Today we're going to go over the battery effect, what it is and how you build to take advantage of it. But that's not all. We'll also be doing a deep dive into the native status effects of each character to provide you with a foundation for these types of builds. Before we get going with this one though, don't forget to drop a like. It massively helps to get more eyes on the video and it's completely free. Great. Now that's out of the way, let's get on with the video. Now, I'm not afraid to admit when I'm wrong, or in this case, just plain ignorant, but it seems that I've been playing Avengers for around about 700 plus hours, and I never heard of this until about two months ago. In my defense, if you're new to looters, but because this game has those big old red and white letters that make the swooshy comic book noises at the start, you decided to pick it up like I did, then you might not know too much about how games like this work, especially when the info isn't presented to you in detail as you play the game. Basically, if you pay attention while the loading screens are spinning up and you're not focusing entirely on Hulk's neck veins, you'll notice the tooltips will occasionally show something about positively and negatively charged damage types. And basically what this details is that if one of your enemies has a fully applied status effect with a positively charged damage type, then inflicting negatively charged damage will be more effective. And also vice versa, which is incredible. Now, time to dive into the detail on this. To do this, I've prepared an infographic that shows the status types and what effects they can have. On one side, we have positively charged status effects. Let's get into it. Cosmic. Enemies that are ionized will take increased damage from incoming attacks and will recover the willpower of the hero attacking them. Plasma. Enemies affected by burn will be intermittently interrupted from attacking. Some enemies will also be staggered by the effect. Particle. Enemies affected by shrink will reduce in size, deal less damage and take more damage from all attacks. Vibranium. The vibranium stats effect turns all damage dealt to affected enemies into a large kinetic explosion that can hit other enemies and set off chain reactions. And on the opposite side, we have the negatively charged statuses. Shock. Enemies that are shocked will take increased damage from incoming attacks and will have a greater chance of being hit with a critical attack. Gamma. Enemies affected by gamma poisoning will take intermittent damage over time that spreads to nearby enemies. When defeated, this will cause a large damage explosion. Cryo. Enemies affected by cryo freeze will have reduced movement and may lose the ability to defend entirely. Sonic. Enemies affected by Sonic status effect are turned into recharge stations. Heroes near the affected target will regenerate a portion of their heroic and intrinsic meters. So what this means is when you're building characters out that you should try and factor in a positive or negative effect on your main attacks that you use. Let's say for example if you use Iron Man's very popular missile ranged attacks you should look for a piece of gear with the status perks on missiles. In my case, I use a ranged piece with the perk Plasma Bomb, which applies the Plasma Burn status effect and deals plasma damage with every missile attack that I use. So now that I have a status effect on my main attack, I need an oppositely charged status effect to prime the enemy that I'm focusing on, especially if that enemy is extra tough compared to regular enemies. I'm looking at you, buddy. So for the attack that I use to prime an enemy, I use a piece of gear with a perk that applies shock damage to my signature attacks. Those attacks on Iron Man consist of two attacks that can be chained together, the uppercut and the ground slam. This is super helpful as even though you might need to get close, you're still moving in a pattern erratic enough to avoid most attacks. After priming the enemy, I begin to use my main attack, except now I get double the damage I would have with just one status effect. As well as this, you may notice that some heroes have a native status effect on certain attacks. In this video, I'll be running you through some of the infographics I've prepared on who can do what status damage natively and on what skill. Note that some of these may need to be enabled by selecting certain skills in the skill tree. Links to these will be in the description down below. As well as this, I'll also be giving ratings on the character's ability to apply status effects natively with gear and their ability to use the battery effect quickly and efficiently. These ratings are not reflective of the character as a whole. Let's start with Iron Man. I gave the Armored Avenger a top score of 5 out of 5, not just because he's my favorite, but because he can natively apply battery effect with no additional gear perks. His laser heavy attack has an NSE, native status effect of plasma and whilst it doesn't apply a status effect to the enemy it works as the heavy hitter when your enemies are affected with a negatively charged status effect 
like shock, which is exactly what his support heroic does. And again, the reason I have Iron Man at top score is because his support instantly adds a full stack of shock status to anyone caught in its range, which means he's also one of the fastest to be able to apply the battery effect. If you don't have his heroic, his parry also applies shock status, albeit much slower. To do this, you need to have the right specialization enabled in the skill menu too. Moving on to Miss Marvel now, and despite literally only having one skill that can natively apply status, and that skill being highly situational, I've given her 3 out of 5, as she enables status effects very well when using gear that adds status effect. That said, if you don't have any gear that does this, you could use her ranged grab power attack if you have the panic button upgrade unlocked in the skill tree, you can grab your enemies of an elemental type, let's say a cryosynthoid, and slam them to the ground to apply an AoE burst of status damage that affects enemies caught in its radius. Again, highly situational, so it's not something I'd recommend doing in the heat of combat. Speaking of the grab ability, Hulk has a similar skill in his signature grab attack. When Ionic Overflow is enabled in the skill menu, held elemental enemies will apply an AoE burst of status damage that applies to nearby enemies. Also, when using his Assault and her Ultimate Heroics when the Irradiated Destruction and Ground Zero specializations are enabled respectively, you can create a circle of radiation that applies the Gamma stats effect, and also cause damage over time. That said, the effectiveness when trying to apply these statuses is pretty low, and coupled with his inability to effectively apply stats effects even when using gear perks, I'd advise focusing on something else for your Hulk build. 1 out of 5 here. Let's cover Kate Bishop next. Unfortunately, Kate herself has literally no native status effects. Also, despite her enjoyable moveset, it doesn't fit very well with applying multiple status effects. So I've scored her a 1 out of 5 too. Now, onto the first Avenger. Captain America has newly added status effect capabilities in the form of the Sonic status. These were added when the War for Wakanda expansion dropped. They only apply for Commander's Call and on of activation of his ultimate, but that said, his moveset is very well rounded, so when it comes to applying status effects, use gear with melee attacks and ranged attacks with opposing effects to really take advantage of the battery effect as quickly as possible. 3 out of 5 for Cap. Moving on to our resident super spy, Natasha Romanov, aka the Black Widow. Widow has a wider range of attacks that can inflict status effects and cause status damage, with the majority of them being focused on shock. With that in mind, I suggest enabling plasma on her impact grenade to natively prime groups of enemies for the battery effect. As well as this, you could focus on acquiring gear to deal positively charged status damage and effects, then follow up with Widow's native shock attacks to deal double damage with ease. Or you can consider applying a shock status effect first, which increases the chance of being able to hit enemies with a critical attack, which can allow you to deal a huge amount of damage. Widow for me gets a solid 4 out of 5. Next up, we've got Hawkeye. Considering that I gave Kate a 1 out of 5, you'd think I'd do the same for the second archer in our game. But despite Clint only having two ways of natively applying status effects, they are both extremely effective and can cause massive amounts of damage even on their own. If you want to prime your enemies, I suggest applying the Twin Talon specialization on his ultimate heroic. Then, as soon as you enter a tough room, use it and then follow up with a plasma-based Nightstorm arrow to deal massive damage to any enemies caught inside the AoE. Good advice to build on this would to be either having a plasma or another positive effect on split shot arrows to deal damage at a rate few can keep up with. Due to all of this, Hawkeye receives top marks from me. 5 out of 5. Next up, it's time to talk about the latest addition to the game. King T'Challa of Wakanda, the Black Panther. T'Challa is the only character thus far that can apply Vibranium natively. And although he can only apply this himself with one attack, it is extremely effective. Coupled with the ability to apply status with ease by using gear effects, battery effects should be very easy to proc. In fact, a piece of range gear called the Gauge of Bast actually has built-in battery effect on his range combo. 
Whilst other characters have been shown to drop with jeweled pieces like this, Black Panther has proven the easiest to acquire as it drops from any villain sector. The King gets 4 out of 5. Finally, we have the God of Thunder himself, Thor Odin's son. Thor's intrinsic ability channels the Odin Force, which infuses almost all of his attacks with shock in some way. So make sure that if you're natively trying to utilize the battery effect, that you apply the ultimate heroic specialization, Muscleheim's Torment, that applies plasma damage to the attack and leaves an AoE of plasma damage. Using this attack will also continue to apply the status effect over time, which you should capitalize on by using any shock based attack to deal extra damage. Thor has more abilities that deal shock damage than anyone else, so it's strongly advised that you equip gear that applies a positively charged status effect, as it will save you a lot of time in initiating the battery effect. The strongest Avenger, unsurprisingly, receives a 5 out of 5. Before I close this one out, it's important for me to point out that these scorings are more focused on the character's ability to apply status effects, status damage, and initiate the battery effect both natively and with gear. Remember, if you're focusing on applying statuses, that you should also consider gear with the intensity stat to increase your ability in that area. For more info on that and all the other stats, check out another video on the channel. Round about here. But that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed it or at least found it useful. If you did, please like, subscribe. And if you want to come and talk about this live or any other subject on Marvel's Avengers, come check me out over on twitch.tv forward slash Bob Duck and Weave or connect with me on socials at Bob Duck and Weave. All the links are in the description down below. Thanks so much again. And as always, stay safe, stay awesome, and I'll see you all soon. Bye bye.